Hello everyone, David King here. So today I want to show you uh, a little example of how we're using uh, Firebase and Flutter to do mobile uploads of images. So that is photos taken from a mobile app and then making sure that those public URLs are then consumed within our database, that is uh, Firebase Firestore. So there's actually a few moving parts to this and it's it's reasonably complex, but the, the end result is actually something that's very stable. If you want to know more about the ideas behind this, it, I highly recommend watching the Firebase offline video here, uh, where Todd and his uh, partner, I can't remember her name, I'm sorry, I've forgotten her name, Susan? Yeah. So Susan talk about uh, offline capabilities of Firebase. And as you can see in this um, caption here, the cloud storage for Firebase doesn't have quite a robust of an off offline solution as Firestore. So what he's talking about here is uh, with Firestore, if you're offline, you make some changes in your app over here, and uh, then you know you you close your phone down, um, you turn it back on again, or you you know you kill the app and start it up again. Any of those pending writes and, and updates and deletes are still stored in the cache between those sessions. And the moment you have mobile access again, it reconciles all those changes and it's just very, very robust. But with Firestore, uh, uh, Firebase storage, that is the file side of things, if you kill your app, um, those intentions uh, for file uploads is lost. So there is a local cache while your app is running that is maintained. Um, and so if you have, you know, Apache network um, connections, then it will be resumed in due course. But if you kill the app, those, those intentions are lost. So our solution here is to basically use Firestore, that is the database, to store those um, intention, uh, those upload intentions, uh, knowing that, that that does have the same offline capability. So basically, in a nutshell, when you take a photo on this app, it saves that intention to upload it into the mobile uploads uh, Firestore collection. I'll just show you it here. So we have, um, I've got a filter running, I'll just clear that. So here, here are um, a bunch of images that have been uploaded to the system. And there's quite a bit of data there. I'm just gonna walk through that shortly. So what happens is when you create an image on here, it writes to this document, uh, this collection rather. <clears throat> And then instead of uh, acting on it immediately, what it does is it actually waits for that collection um, uh, to change in order to do the upload. So it, it seems like it's a, a roundabout way because typically what you do is you might take your photo and then upload it immediately uh, and then get that result, get that public URL and then apply it to your um, to your app however you want to use it. But what I'm doing here in this uh, situation is when you take the photo, it writes to the Firestore collection there. And then it's also in parallel, constantly at all times, listening to that Firestore collection and saying like, hey, show me all the images for this device, for this user that I have not yet uploaded. And then when it gets the, that data, it's then doing that upload task and reconciling the uh, data. <clears throat> Uh, through a Fire, Firebase function. Whew. So um, those Firebase functions uh, happen in two places. So it could either be that the um, the upload document itself, uh, it has all the data it needs, and then we're going to make a change elsewhere in, in the database, or the image is received, and then it's going to make that change as well for us. So I'm just going to run through an example so you can see how it looks. And I'm just going to squeeze myself over here. And I'm going to go into here. And just to give you a little bit of background, this app is for surveying. So you can basically collect records um, on sites. Um, so I'm just going to put in a little bit of demo data here. So floor level, um, the lounge, I'll put in a table. Uh, because this is the simulator, I don't actually have access to the camera. I'm going to take one of the gallery photos and then just save that. And hopefully you can see where that was written. I'll try another one. You can obviously see uh, those changes on here, but I think it might have just been out of, out of the view. There it is. Okay, so there we have this is the skeleton promise 
uh, for an image. So this uh, contains all the data I need to know in order to reconcile that upload. So if I go into here in the walls, this image is on the local device. So it's a local path and I've got that source path uh, here. And then I've also got something here, which is the field path. Now, what our system does is once that image has been uploaded, uh, we have a Firestore function that listens for changes in this collection, uh, and then also uh, listens for that file being uploaded itself. And so what it does is once it has that file and it has the public URL, it actually looks at this path here. So this, like you can see, uh, reports, and then we've got an ID slash items slash something slash photo. So let's just have a look at that. It's uh, CTRN. So reports, items, CTRN, photo, all right? Okay. So we had a photo there, um, and that's been saved. And as you can see, that's uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a local path. So that's not actually useful to us. But when we go through to here and we go to our media uploads page this this is going to start then listening to um, that mobile uploads document and this is all the things that are related to the current user on this device so you can see we have a unique unique identifier for the device and you can ident unique identifier for the user and we're saying like show me you know my files that where the upload complete is false so we'll just put that filter on upload complete uh, equal to false um, we should see our yeah so we should have a couple there so if I go to media uploads there's a couple of images they're being uploaded and now if I drill down into that report have a look at it so it's here aha that local path has now been changed into a public URL so it has been successfully uploaded and I have that public URL and it's available there and so now, oops, if I drill down again into my report, it was walls. It's loading a remote URL this time rather than a local one. And that's been uh, updated. Whew. So the whole process um, basically pivots uh, on two, I suppose, three principles. Uh, number one is using uh, Firebase Firestore, that is the database, to house our uh, cache of uploads. So that is, anytime I click this save button down here, what I'm doing is I'm just having a look at my form here and I'm saying, okay, which of these are a file that should be uploaded? Aha, I found one. And it knows uh, a little bit of information about that. So it knows the, uh, the path to that field. So that's the collection the um, report slash report ID slash item slash the item ID and then the field which was photo. So it knows that. And then what it does is the moment you press save, it writes that intention to this mobile uploads collection. Still have that filter running. Um, and then and then you know it just waits. And then in parallel, parallel to that, we have our media uploads. This is a long running listener for, you know, my, sort of my um, uploads that have not been completed on this device. And then it, I have access to that source path and it just basically uploads it. And then in the background, we have a couple of functions that listen to changes on the database and changes on the storage bucket. So let's have a look at that storage bucket. And this is this is quite similar. We've got mobile dash uploads and you know here's all of our files. So those are cloud functions. Um, let's just have a look at those. We have got two functions here. One which listens to um, the storage, those that is the files being uploaded. And basically it it says, okay, you've uploaded to mobile uploads path. So that's the first thing it checks. Was it in the correct path? Um, and then I, I, I grab the file and then I read the related Firestore document. And so you can see here, I've got this file named 2BRF. Uh, I'm pretty confident that in my database, um, mobile uploads, I'm gonna have 2BRF, there it is. So that's the, so those two paths are related. So um, the, database path is going to match the storage bucket path. You can see I'm also storing the extension, which is JPEG, uh, because obviously 
Here I just have uh, a unique ID which you know doesn't have .jpg on it, and I'm I'm happy for that. But by keeping this .jpg, um, we can be sure that uh, that we can fully reconcile that path there. So once we have the access to the image and the Firestore document, um, we can just basically uh, reconcile that mobile upload once all those conditions have been met. And this is a this is a separate function that basically says, give me the public URL for that file. And that's an array, so we just pull out the first value. Uh, and then we update the destination document. So again, on that database side of things, we have that field value, so a field path here. Um, I'll just copy it, paste it in here. So we can have a look at it. So we can see we've got a, a collection, then a document, then a sub-collection, a document, and this is a path. So this is a field within this document. And that could be photo.url, it could be you know dot notation, whatever it is. And we're just um, basically looking for that path by popping off the last bit. We're just ignoring that bit. Yeah. And so now we have uh, the destination field set to photo and the destination path set to this. So we can get the document and then we get the field. And then we're just running an update on that. And we're also updating the source document. That is this document here to say the upload is complete true. And we're also just putting the public URL there as well. So we can access it as well. And so you might think that that's everything we need to do, just listen to the file being uploaded and reconcile it that way. But actually, we kind of have a race condition here because if you, and I highly recommend you watch this video uh, for offline capabilities, there is a race condition whereby, I, I think it's actually very, very unlikely to happen, but it could, and therefore it's worth doing. And that is that if your app is offline, okay, and we've got that local version of the mobile uploads collection, uh, our app can still access that local version. It can still listen to those changes and therefore it can upload that file. Okay, so the let's say the mobile app goes back online again. It has two jobs to do. Number one is to reconcile Firestore. So that is all that data that's, that's being, being pushed up, including your mobile uploads collection. And then it's also going to start all those upload tasks to the files and there's no guarantee that the file will happen second because this this app has a local version of that mobile uploads collection so when i go into here correctly it's going to say hey you told me you know to upload these uh, these images so actually we have a second firebase function um which which listens to um, one which listens to the file store and it's saying like, okay, at this point, um, is upload complete set to true? No, okay, in that case, let's just double check that the file hasn't already been uploaded because the file could have been uploaded first and then the Firestore document second. Um, and so it, this is just to handle that race condition. And again, it just uses the same little common bit of functionality here to update the um, source document and the destination field. Whew. So hopefully that's given you a good idea of how to add some resilience into um, mobile uploads. And I'm sorry that we haven't covered a lot of code there. I'm happy to share my Firebase functions, but the code that handles the Firebase, uh, sorry, the Flutter side of things, it's a little bit tied up with a, a larger app. Uh, if there's enough demand for it, I could build a sample app uh, to, to run through that. So just, you know, let me know in the comments and uh, I hope you're all having a fantastic winterval and uh, I'll see you all around. Toodaloo.